All right, welcome to the February Design Workshop, everyone. We've got a light crew today, which is cool. It's intimate. It's close. Friendly. Um, today, this month, February, we're we're talking all things Easter. So, I think all the Art Speak universities are going to be Easter focused. Um, we're going to have some other Easter content, and so also design workshop is Easter focused. So we're going to go over um, the Easter sermon series packages that aren't quite released yet, but they will be soon from Art Speak Creative um, that include everything you need for your church to get that jump on Easter that that you'll you'll need to have here in the next few weeks and next month or so as you start to promote and plan for all those Easter things. So we're going to dive into a package, the the package that Dietz here made. And uh, this one's called Risen, I think. We're good. Let me uh, share my screen. Yeah, so no slides today. This is this is going to be in program doing some design work. Um, so yeah, so this is the Easter Risen package um, that you can buy, use, use for your church, use for your organization. Uh, we have a few other options as well. I think there's four total um, from different looks and feels. And when you download it, you're going to have all these Photoshop files, all these different source files to use. And this is one of them. This is the title 16 by nine. And so we're going to start here and we're going to act like we just downloaded this and um, we need to make it ours for our church. We're going to customize it. So first thing you'll want to do probably is put your church name on there. So it's specific to your church. So here in the uh, title 16 by nine in Photoshop, we're going to have, um, down here in the layers panel, we have the Easter title right there. So I'm going to turn, turn it back on. We know which one that is. And and because these are editable, because it's yours now, you can just make it whatever you want. Um, you can put at your church anywhere. You can use any font, maybe of a brand font or something like that that you want to do it in. But we're just going to duplicate this layer. I did command J there. Sorry. Um but you can also do, do you right click duplicate layer and I'm going to drag it down, double click that. And let's say at, Oh, if we say at hope, maybe our church name is hope church. Let's do that. All right. Oh, all these, all these windows. Here we go. That's a little bit big. I, I think about it, I'll put spaces in it. And then we'll just, I did command T to resize that. We're going to drag it down to size. Might be a little small. And then I'm going to drop that spacing. And these files were made for this. So hopefully Dietz doesn't feel like I'm destroying his beautiful work here. Um, but there we go. We got Easter at Hope Church. Look at that. We got our title slide for Easter at Hope Church. Um, and we have a good start now on what we want to do for the rest of the pieces. So um, maybe let's check real quick. We got extra bold. What would like semi bold look? Get some contrast in there. That that's kind of nice. Get a little bit more space. There we go. <clears throat> so we can save this. I will not save. I think it's still get to see all my messy files yeah so these are the packages here um 
Oh, wait, you can't see that. This is, or can you? You see this? Oh, okay, nice. All right. Um, all right, don't look at my messy desktop, guys. I'm going to put this on my, that's not that bad, I guess. I'm going to save that so we can use it here in a bit. So along with that 68 by nine size, we've included other sizes. We've got nine by 16 vertical, like Instagram story size, vertical phone size. We got four by five, which is a vertical post and then one by one as well. So you could do that same thing in each file. You know, we're going to duplicate Easter. We're going to type it and resize it again. Or something that's really great about Photoshop is you can duplicate a layer into another file. So I did right click duplicate, and then it's going to give me a destination here. I can pick any of the other files I have open, which is really handy. Um, something I'm going to do to help me size this in the other files is I'm going to take Easter with it. So I'm going to duplicate both of these layers over to title nine by 16. And they're going to be in here already. So see, that's like a little bit different size, but if I keep them together, I'm actually going to group them just for Sandy's sake. And then kind of place them in the general area, command T to resize, drag that to where Easter matches. And now I can pick which Easter I want to delete. I'll probably delete the new one just because we know the original one was good to go. There you go. And now I'm going to bump that up so it's kind of centered in that box. So that was a lot less work than duplicating the type layer, retyping it, changing the way, changing the all the tracking and all that stuff. And then now we can also we can just keep it consistent through all the files. So you could do this on all of those layers. I'm going to skip down to a file that we included called key art. So this is going to be like transparent art that you can use maybe on a screen over a video background. Um, you could use it in all kinds of ways, but one way you could also have it as kind of the series or the, the logo or the main graphic, and they can put it on top of social graphics and all that kind of stuff. So we're going to do the same thing again. We've got Easter out church. I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to target key art. Drop that in. And this is going to be pretty close to the exact same because it's the same file size. So we'll delete the original Easter. Now we have those. <clears throat> and then to use this how we want to, we're going to, well, do. So you can use, um, you can do save as and have Photoshop and then put another spot or I just know the, I just know the shortcut. Um, export if it's file, export, export as it's, it's command option, shift W. One second. There we go. All right. So I'm going to hit that shortcut. Nope. We're going to get this window. All these, all these uh, zoom things. Here we go. And it'll probably default to JPEG. Just come up here and hit PNG and you'll get transparency, magical transparency. These files we provide are also at um, 4K resolution, so you have plenty of extra to work with. Got a lot of extra space, lots of extra size and info there. Um, for this, I'm going to save it at a, the typical 1920 to 1080 resolution. So we're going to export that key art. We're going to use it here in just a second. Uh, boo, boo, boo. My desktop. New folder. PNG. Good. All right. 
we'll leave these as is. So that's kind of customizing these files. You can do that to any of these. Um, we'll, we'll probably come back in here in a little bit. Uh, we have the B. Yeah, so we've got notes, we've got background. We'll come back to these backgrounds in just a second. Um, so now we're going to hop over to Illustrator. Perhaps there we go. All right. So something else that you'll probably want to do with these is create. Man, Zoom windows don't know when to get out of the way. Okay. Um, you'll probably want to create some social graphics to promote and and all that. So what we've included. In this is some of these, like I pointed out, backgrounds, some different sizes that can get you started. So I'm going to drag in this four by five background graphic. And that's going to fit right here in this size. I'll put on the first one. And then we can take our key art. I'm going to drag that in. Nope, that's so we got a transparent graphic we can do easter at hope church that's a nice scroll stopping kind of look there so maybe we want to do a carousel um if you do a carousel in Illustrator, what you can do is you can make your artboards butt up against each other. And then maybe we can just we can size this up. We could turn it, do that. We could use the original nine, nine, 16 by 9 background size maybe. Let's go grab that. That's on top of the title right now. So Can you right? I thought I could right click, send it back. Yeah, there you go. Arrange, send it back. I just know the sh keyboard shortcuts here. There we go. So you'll want to tell people when your event, your Easter services, details, all that stuff is. So I know that the font for this was Metropolis. I'm going to do a text box. I'm going to hit Mo, Me, Metropo. Metropo. Zoom windows. Again. All right, so right now this is not a text box because I didn't click and drag when I made the text layer. This is a static, you know, I can distort it. Don't do that. So all I need to do to make it a text box is just double click this little handle. And now I can put a bunch of content in here. So how about we say, join us for Easter, Easter Sunday. We make it white, the contrast is a little crazy. So let's do this, we're gonna eye for eyedropper. I want one of these colors maybe, because we wanna keep that, that going. Maybe. All right. Got the actual Easter date. I'm going to copy that over. Also, if you want to, when you have a text box, if you want to resize, if I try to click and drag these handles, it doesn't actually resize the text, it just resizes the box. What you can do is you can get another shape 
and select it with that text box. And now when you resize, it resizes the text. How's that for wizardry deets? You probably already knew that, but. Um, I'll we'll do this back. We'll, I think extra bold is what the title was. So, you know, you, you'll probably have some more personality or whatever going on in yours, but let's say we got Hope Church. Wait, how about hope.church slash Easter? Boom. So now we've got, maybe, maybe, hold on, hold on. Maybe we get a little bit more color here. There, okay. So when we export these images, this background will extend over to the second slide in the carousel. So it's going to feel like they're connected and not two different things. And all we have to do is just butt these artboards up together and then let the background go through um, both artboards. So what you could do is you could do, um, you can do the export for screens and go to artboards. We don't need this third one. We just do like Easter, social one, and Easter, social two. Probably a JPEG would be good. There you go. And then you can export from there. Um, well, let's go ahead and do it actually. So now we have both of those to use. And again, you can use all these different pieces. You could get really creative. Maybe you want to hop back over to Photoshop and you can use this box and the kind of frosted he has risen you could have he has risen in different pieces above and below like you can really start to take this all apart and use it all kinds of different ways um for the sake of time i'm not really showing us doing all that stuff i want to kind of get through some of these other bits um, so let's hop over now to an invite card so most of the things we included in the um in the packaged files are screen graphics. We don't have any print graphics just because that's a whole nother beast. And um, there's going to be a lot more specifics there. But if you wanted to make uh, a screen graphic or I mean a, a print graphic from these screen graphics, it's very possible. All we got to do is go back to, uh, I think for we can do our backgrounds for this again. And maybe... Let's drop in the nine by 16 size. And because we have so much resolution and so much extra stuff to work with for these, we've got plenty. Look at that. We can maybe mask this top down just to keep us tidy. So this size is a three by five card. That creates kind of a nice size. It's not a tiny business card. It kind of sits in your hand well. You could put it in your Bible or, or whatever. And then we have this red line is the bleed. So we have a eighth inch bleed all around. Um, so our kind of this, the full size here is three and a quarter by five and a quarter. Uh, doo -doo -doo. And... We already created all these pieces. Look how easy it's going to be to make our invite card. Pew. Something else to keep in mind too is that you are going to be going from RGB colors to CMYK colors. So there's going to be some color shift. Printers can't quite recreate that RGB brightness and vividity. That's probably not a word, vividness. Um, with the CMYK print. Something else that's nice on printed pieces where you turn it over is to have maybe a nice contrast from front to back. So instead of the dark colors on light for the back, maybe 
We'll do the dark. Light on dark. Getting fancy. Could go no. Just gonna eye drop from here. Eye dropping from your design will keep it feeling really consistent and cohesive so you're not changing colors all the time. You know, maybe maybe we actually do this white. I don't know. We've got options. So you could also maybe we want to give this stark background some extra interest. We'll drag that over here and then we can use a blend mode and do no overlay. No, let's do multiply. Maybe you get a little bit of extra something back in there. No, not luminosity, difference. Ah, that's going to make it black. Never mind. So you can play with these blend modes too and just see what you can make happen. And again, you can always go back into the Photoshop files and just export some other resources or change some things up and experiment again. Something I'm thinking I want to do with this as an example, we can spend a little bit more time. So I'm going to hop back over. There's a comment chat. Oh, try screen. Mike says try screen. I think screen will make it bright. Yeah, but that... Something I've noticed with like RG, when you're working in CMYK things, in Illustrator, if the effect looks really subtle on your computer screen, it's going to look even more subtle when it's printed. When it so prints, like, yeah. Sometimes you have to exaggerate that effect. Yeah, you gotta, if it looks a little... Yeah, yeah you got to exaggerate stuff. If it looks a little too exaggerated, it might be okay when it prints. Right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and I tried I tried color burn in it. I think I like that better for what we're trying to do. What's up, Mike? I was gonna mention too, when you were playing with the colors, um go if you color drop the blue, like that paisley, if you color drop the plays paisley blue into join us for Easter Sunday. Um and it's kind of a if you use like a lower contrast color, like blue on blue or uh uh orange on or yellow on orange or something like that. Just make sure your text is really chunky so it's really legible and only do yeah. i don't do that for like the large chunky text for mm -hmm. everything that's a little bit more a little thinner like sunday like the date and the time i try to keep that white really if I'm high contrast white. yeah you're right yeah something you can do too is if you sample from your art and it's not quite there the hsb slider and color is really handy because it's going to keep you in a general color the same color space, but you can change like the saturation. You can maybe change the brightness. So we're still staying in the same kind of color zone, same ballpark, but we're going to kind of adjust the, the specifics of that color so that it can look good in the space. Right. And it's not as, that is not as, uh, it's, it's not as contrasty as yeah. light on dark, but it's a, it's a little more elevated than just doing just all white text yeah sometimes all white text is good well a lot of time all white text is fine but sometimes all white text looks um uh not as not as uh thought out it's just yeah, it's not as intentional or not as yeah. intentional yeah you're right on there yeah um and you know you can also to help you or your team in this whole process is from the very start maybe you're gonna We'll do this real quick, just uh, since we're on the topic. So maybe you can just get a quick swatch, you know, sample. This won't be perfect, but you could spend a little bit of time on the front end and get some colors you're really happy with that will work well. These would need some more work, but then... um. Once you have these set, at least in Illustrator, what you can do is you can select all those. You can do a um, a new color group. Do like Easter 2023. And something that will really help is global swatches too. We're not going to get into that. But Deet is going to do a color design workshop, I think next month or very, very soon. 
And uh, I'm sure he will touch on all these goodies here. But now you have your swatches here and they're going to be global. So what you can do is, you know, I want this, that color. I want this, that color. And let's make this that. So like I said, these colors would need a bit more work. Um, if I come in here, I'm going to go HSB sliders. Anywhere that this color is appearing now in my document. So let's just have two of these for example. Anywhere that color is appearing in my document is going to change when I edit this swatch because it's a global swatch. So say you set you set these colors at the beginning and halfway through designing, you're like, you know what? That's not going to work. I'm going to change that up. Let's let's make that one a, I don't know, a green? Maybe like a greenish blue something. There we go. And now anywhere you had used that color, you're updating that color across your document. Um, and you can easily do that. Across different documents, you could export these swatches to save somewhere and then load them into that document. But we're getting outside of our scope for today. Dietz, Dietz will be taking notes. He'll, he'll tell us all about that next time. Um, so we've made our invite. I'm going to leave that color. It kind of works. This yellow would... Okay, I can't leave it. I can't not. I can't not touch it. Let's just brighten this up. I want that yellow. Cool. That's yeah, pretty cool. That could work. Um, we could ship that. So when you have this invite now, you've got Easter at Hope Church on the front. You flip it over. It's a, it's a contrasty. It feels nice. you got all the information there. You could have more content on here. Again, you could piece out the design and have different pieces on there. We're going to switch back to Photoshop right quick. So we have the four by five background here. And next, I was, I was going to show us, um, show us, I was going to share. I went to uh, I went to Photoshop too early. Hold on, let's go back to Illustrator. We want to do sermon notes, so you know, whatever pastor says, you know, I'm going to make these points. I'm going to have this verse on the screen. We can use our pieces for the uh, the background, foreground. Um, we can use the key art in the corner. There's all kinds of things. So now. We can go back to Photoshop. We're going to go to, uh, there it is, notes. So Dietz made this really awesome. We've got, he is risen, kind of blurred out in the background. So this is a great opportunity to have the look and feel that has been in promotion, that has been on the website, that's been all these places that people have seen ahead of time now also be included in the service. So this can be our background on our notes. Um, so this is the workable file. You could change this up if you wanted to, but we also have the exported um, assets. And then you could turn off, maybe you want some versions without the he has risen. Um, we have the light, this light leak here that's changing some colors. You could do all kinds of stuff to customize this. Um, we're going to we'll just leave this as is. Yeah. So is that 50% 1920 by 1080? I'm going to make it the best quality I can. And we're going to drop that in our exports folder. Hop back over to Illustrator. Back and forth. And now for these sermon notes, we can grab that file. If I don't get lost in all my windows. All right. Okay, so I've got this artboard targeted here. I've got here centered on that. I copy it. 
And then you can go to edit. I don't think you can see this. We do uh, up in the menu, you can do edit paste on all artboards or the, um, the shortcut is command option shift V kind of a lot. And since we already had one there, put another one on. But so now we have that background on all of our artboards. And say he's going to be in Mark 16. We're going to grab a few verses. We could do a text box. I'm going to paste it. We're going to do our formatting real quick. Something when you're doing this is you want to be sure that the text size is big enough that people are going to be able to read it. Like if there's a screen up on the platform, they can see it from there. Or even if there's, you know, a really big, large screen on the sides or, you know, wherever this is going to end up, you want to be sure that it's large enough that it can be legible. Um, I'm probably going to size this up a bit more. I'm going to go there. Look at that. Oh, let's turn off, turn off hyphenation. Where's that? There we go. So you could format this, make it look really good. And again, we can do the, we'll copy this and then we can paste in place on each artboard. And now all we got to do, some, some of this you might need to do in ProPresenter, depends on your process. Um, and there's all kinds of ways to be efficient with this. You could make paragraph styles. Um, you could make a centered uh, a uh, text box where the text is going to be centered vertically as well. Um, there's all kinds of things. You can also use the same formatting. You can have your mark 16. Um, one through, I think it's eight. You have this. Let's copy that and delete it. And paste it on every artboard. So, you know, again, you'd want to spend time with all this stuff, but you can just see how having these resources from the start, all you're doing is putting the content and the information in. You can customize it when you feel like you need to, um, but it's pretty straightforward there. Something else you could do real quick is go back to our key art. This is where that key art is really useful too. Um, if you would want to have this, you know, in the corner, or we're going to lose at Hope Church, it's a little small. So maybe you do a key art that just says Easter and still has that look and feel. You know, maybe that's too repetitive. And again, that's where you can come in and customize. Ah, this doesn't feel quite right. Maybe we take out his risen in the back. Um, you, you got options, but you can do the uh, paste on all boards trick again. And there you go. So you start to have really customized, appropriate, relevant sermon notes, even for during the service, just from all these resources. So I think that's all I got for y'all. We could keep going. We could really deep dive and do a lot more, do a lot more customization. I wanted to give a quick overview of how we can use these packages though, and um, get up and running for our church's Easter um, look and feel and promotion. So do y'all have any other comments or any questions? Uh, one thing, like you mentioned something about it not being super repet about worry about it being super repetitive. One thing that I like to do when I'm doing sermon notes for my church mm. is have two different slides and you can do this really easily yeah. with have here, uh, like a dark slide at a white or a dark slide at a light slide. So for this, you could just, it could be just as simple as laying that purple color on top of this graphic Yeah, and have that be your point. So like point one is uh jesus was crucified or whatever so and then just make it big and bold and then the lighter those lighter backgrounds could be your sermon notes so that that so that the focus becomes on the so the focus shifts to the scripture not necessarily the art and then every time yeah um um every time you see a point slide 
that's when the key art shows up to emphasize, oh, this is part of the same series, but then it goes away once we did once you show the actual sermon notes. But that's just personal. It's all it's up to it's up to you, the designer, what you want to do, but that's just personal preference for me. Yeah, that's great. Um let's just see that real quick. Cause I mean that's soup again, it's super easy to do. So I saved out that background with a dash dark at the end, just so I knew right away. And yeah, like you said, um, it's kind of the gist of this verse was Christ or this passage, you know, they go to the tomb. Christ isn't there. Surprise. Hopefully no one was worried about spoilers for Easter. Um, make that light to contrast, you know, if you want, Again, you can use your swatches or whatever you need to do. Yeah, that's great, Mike. So, you know, again, we could spend more time and make this real good, but uh, that's a great start. Christ was not there for the point, and then they go into making kind of any supporting statements or verses or whatever. It could be a contrast that is, that is a bit more engaging, a bit more visual. It's good. Any other thoughts, comments, questions, concerns, ideas? This was great, Jared. Thank you. Yeah. Sweet. Well, thanks for joining everybody. And uh, if you're watching in the community after the fact, be sure to uh, ask any questions you have in the comments down below there and um, let us know what you're thinking about this, how you plan to use it or how, you know, you could, take this to the moon and back uh, for your Easter or take this to the Easter egg and back. No, I was trying to think of something Easter. That's we're not going to uh, Mitchy cut this. All right, cool. All right, sweet. Um, thanks guys. And we'll see you in March for the next design workshop.